Today, I'm going to be taking a look at this weird thing, which looks like some sort of a cross between a games controller and a dinner plate. But is it any good? First impressions are that the controller feels incredibly light and it weighs in at 229 grams. The shape is somewhat reminiscent of the 3D controller that the Sega Saturn had. Sure, the button layout is different, but the overall shape is very similar. And talking of buttons, that really is the next thing that hits you. The sheer number of buttons on this thing. In addition to the normal A, B, X, Y buttons, there are a further two buttons next to them for L1 and R1. And on the top row of buttons, you also have buttons for L2 and R2, as well as a Start, Select and Turbo button. Then, completing the button layout on the top is a big coloured home button, which will power the controller on and off, as well as being used to connect to Bluetooth, in conjunction with one of the other buttons, which in the case of Android is Home and X. Those L1, R1 and L2, R2 on the top of the controller don't mean that iPega have skimped on the shoulder and trigger buttons though. And flipping the controller around, you can see that they are all present, with the trigger buttons being a bit further back than you would normally expect, which, given the shape of the controller, was actually very comfortable. You'll notice that there is a bowl-shaped object stuck to the underneath of the controller. I'll come back to that later, but unless it's screwed in properly, it can sometimes prevent the controller lying perfectly flat on the table. But, to be honest, you're going to be holding this in your hands most of the time anyway. One thing I really didn't like was just how clicky the buttons are. They're possibly the loudest buttons I think I've heard, which I'm sure was made worse by the incredibly hollow feel of the controller. The sticks felt nice, and I'm pleased to say that they have L3 and R3 clicks as well. I ran the controller through Gamepad Tester, and the sticks performed admirably, with no dead zones. In fact, I was quite surprised by just how good they were. All the other buttons performed as you would expect, and as you would imagine from a low-cost product such as this, the triggers are digital rather than analogue. The only real disappointment was the D-pad. On the whole, it didn't feel terrible, but my issue was the right-hand side of it, which felt like it had slightly more resistance than anywhere else on the D-pad. It almost felt like there was something under it that was giving a bit more resistance, and the travel felt ever so slightly different than in other places. Running the D-pad through Gamepad Tester backed up those feelings, as unlike other directions on the D-pad, when I pressed diagonally to move in a northeasterly direction, the D-pad, more often than not, failed to register this. Diagonals in other directions would register correctly, but only occasionally when pressing the up and right arrow at the same time. Obviously not ideal, particularly if you need to be heading in that direction. Let's try this out with a quick bit of gameplay. But before I do that, I just want to point out that RetroArch picked this up as an Amazon Fire game controller. This worked for all the buttons apart from Start and Select, so I, I just remapped those two buttons and everything was fine after that. In gameplay, the controller felt comfortable and any seemingly poor performance you might witness here, I am blaming completely completely on that D-pad issue that I mentioned. I tend to test using the same games because I have a pretty good feel for how they should respond, and I have to say that this actually feels a bit laggy. It's not huge, but it does feel perceptible. I should also point out that these buttons also seem to have a little bit more travel than most controllers I'm used to, so that could be contributing to the feeling of lag. So what about that ball that was underneath the controller? Well. Unscrew the ball from underneath, flip the controller over, and then you can push off the cap from the left thumbstick. Under it, you'll find a screw thread where the ball top can be screwed into place. Hey presto, you've got yourself an arcade style stick. But that's not the only surprise this controller has up its sleeve. That part of the controller where the iPega brand is printed flips open to reveal a stand for your phone or tablet. And when I say stand, it's important to remember that's just what it is, a place to rest your phone. There is nothing to grip or hold the phone in place. If you're holding the controller in your hand and tilt it too much to one side or the other, then don't be surprised if your phone falls out. And there's no adjusting the angle either. Like a complete idiot, I figured that 
now I had the ball top in place, this would be a good time to show off some gameplay in Bloody Roar 2. I have no idea what possessed me, but clearly the extra travel caused by having the ball top in place did me no favours in this game. So, to wrap things up, it's a weird controller that I really kind of like, but will probably not use much. I really like the wide range of options it gives me with the buttons. I really like the sticks, and I also like that I could effectively create a mini arcade machine by propping up a tablet in the stand and attaching the ball top to the left stick. There are only two criticisms I would really make about this controller, and one of those is the feeling of lag. And as I mentioned, this could be down to Bluetooth, too much travel on the buttons, or a combination of the two. The main criticism, though, is about the D-pad. I don't know if it's just mine that's an issue, but it's not good. Putting those issues aside, I've certainly got no regrets about buying it. And if you're interested in picking one up for yourself, I'll leave links in the description below. You can pick these up for around $22, and for the money, I think it's well worth it despite the shortcomings. And if you're on the lookout for controllers, I've got some links on the screen at the moment that you might be interested in.